Welcome back to STL TV Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and still with me in the studio is Erin Joy, the principal and CEO of Black Dress Partners. So with this week being Small Business Week, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk to you more about your small business. And with Erin here, we can get down to business. <laughs> That's one of my favorite phrases, is let's oh, get down so to business. <laughs> so, so we talked a little bit about your company and what things that you bring as a consultant to small businesses. Mm -hmm. But let's just say I am interested, maybe I've just been laid off from my job, or maybe mm -hmm. I've been at home with my kids and I want to start a business. Mm -hmm. So where do I start? I've got a million ideas in my head. How do mm -hmm. I um, fine tune that to a workable idea? What are some tips you might have? Yeah. I, of course, I talk with a lot of people who are in that phase, mm -hmm. just as I'm out and about moving around uh, the community and um, certainly being a business geek and being known for loving business, people come to me with uh, just that question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's really important to start by looking at what you're good at. Okay. And one of the tools that I often use with my clients is uh, a strengths finder assessment. So you want to reference all of those ideas and things that people are telling you about and what you might be reading about online against some really solid self um, self inquiry. Mm -hmm. Okay. To to kind of match the two up, both what your ideas are with what are you actually naturally good at. So strengthsfinder.com is a great place. Uh, I don't make any money off of that or anything yeah. like that. It's just a really great uh, Strength, assessment. So strength finder strengths. Finder.com. Yeah. So it's. Do you find that when looking at your strengths and your interests, it might you might even go back to your childhood because I find that a lot of people end up doing what they love yeah. that they loved 30 years ago. Oh, when absolutely. They were kids. You know, um, being a business owner is such a personal journey. But it's interesting that you would even say childhood because a lot of the work that I do with my business owner clients does go back to um, hmm. both the strengths they developed in their childhood as well as some of maybe, let's call it the, um, the hang-ups <laughs> that they developed right. during their childhood. So yeah, when you, I think when you go back to, um, when you go back, what you'll find is the essence of what you really are good at. I, I personally have always loved business. I started teaching group swing, swimming lessons in my when I was 12, year old, 12 years old. Um, so it wasn't so much about swimming, it was about setting up that I, business. I love, exactly, yeah. I was gonna say, I loved the idea that as a young person, I could make so much money per hour by teaching group swimming lessons. Right. And so, yeah, when I go back and look at it now, I see that I, I you know, that was the essence for me. Um, uh, for, for whatever it was worth, I was raised in an entrepreneurial household, so I had always kind of, I guess, uh, it was natural for me. I'd always yeah. looked at things that way. So now, once we discovered our strengths, and mm -hmm. we know that this is an area or a couple areas, maybe, that we're, um, we're trying to decide between, um, you get this, the, the seed of the, of the idea, mm -hmm. and where do you go mm -hmm. from there? How mm -hmm. do you start a business? It, it can seem overwhelming. So what yeah. are the first steps? Well, it probably is overwhelming. You know, it, it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we'll talk a little bit about some of the local resources, but uh, I think your, the first part of your question was, um, what would you do? Mm -hmm. You know, rather than where do you go necessarily, what are some of the things you would do early on? And I think that finding, a, you know, whether it's a great friend, or uh, someone who's successful in business, even if they're an employee of a company, someone who you can really run your ideas past, who won't just tell you what you want to hear, okay. but who will poke holes in what you're saying mm -hmm. and really challenge you to do the intellectual work, to do the thinking, yeah. to do the real critical thinking to know if this is a solid business idea. So do you recommend that that friend be somebody who's already a successful business person or somebody who's successful in the field that you're interested in? You know, that, that would certainly be ideal, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, these, bi these business distinctions are transferable. Yeah. You know, if, if I work in a, in a corporation in downtown St. Louis and I'm in the accounting department, I could still, well, that would be funny, wouldn't it? Because I just said I don't do <laughs> accounting. <would> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, what I've learned in, in, through that corporation and what, I, what my strengths are would be very valuable to someone who might be thinking about starting a company in the fashion industry or, sure. uh, or in the, you know, the, the uh, hair studio. Uh, the b good business distinctions are transferable across all industries. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah. So you get your idea, you've got your sounding board, your mentor, you've mm -hmm. decided this is an idea that I can really go after and I can make mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah. Do, do you recommend that people work out of their homes when they start? I mean, of course it would depend on the business, but yeah. that's where a lot of people naturally begin. Yeah. Does that make sense or does it make more sense from a, uh, from any other standpoint about to go outside and get an office someplace else? Well, I think it really depends. It depends on how much uh, revenue potential there is in the yeah. business. Yeah. If there's a lot of money to be made in, in that particular um, industry or in that sector, then it would make a lot of sense to spend some money um, to maybe office with a friend. Yeah. You know, I office with another company and we yeah. share the overhead and we share we share yeah. the expense and then yeah. we have that collaborative environment. And more productivity perhaps. More productivity. Yeah. So, you know, it really depends. It's on a case by case basis. But I think as a as someone considering starting a business, what you want to think about is how um, how viable is this? How how solid of an idea uh, and business concept is this? And if it's really legit and really solid, it's worth it's worth going out and getting, you know, really getting established versus working from your kitchen table. Right, perfect. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to come back in a few minutes and talk more about the resources that are available to the small yeah. business owner in St. Louis. We're going to take a quick Good. break right now. And remember to keep up with SDL TV and all the great events going on around St. Louis. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can always watch us streaming live on stltv.net. Stay tuned to STL TV. We'll be right back.